We interrupt our program to take you to Washington. graduates. Uh, I went to my first football game in 1944. They took me to it as a three-year-old and uh, been going ever since. to do is when I first step into the booth just just look out look out to the lake over here look to upper campus over here and this pretty well summarizes I think uh, the flavor of the Pacific Northwest this is a view unparalleled in college football I, I'm sure everybody that their stadium is special to them there is no place like this in the football universe this thing is 91 years old it's held up pretty well, actually, when you think about it. Where in the United States can you watch the game, see the, see the lake, and look at a live volcano, uh, you know, 35, 40 miles away? You know, it's, it's a unique perspective. Hey, can anybody see the flag and let me know if that looks about half mass? Take it up, uh, take it up about uh, five more feet. Okay. I'm gonna stay right there. How's that looking? Go a little higher. That's a fan right there. Hard hat. Hey, go dogs. Go wolf. Hey. Let's beat Oregon, huh? Same defense that's out there. Defense on three. One, two, three. Defense. For him, there's only one school. It's purple. He was disappointed when his team colors were yellow and green. That was a tough day. You guys showing up? You guys ready? We're ready. We're ready. We got some bacon wrap, breakfast sausages with a little cayenne pepper on it, and a little brown sugar, a little sweet and hot, and just some good old brats. And on the other side, we got some pulled pork, some brisket, and then I got a herb crusted pork one that'll be going on about 3.30. It's a good day out here at UW. We're gonna kill Oregon. This is the day. This is the day. And this, and this is how we say it right here. I'm taking pictures because it's the last time with the helmet car and I've been here four years, so. I, I mean, it's, it's a big part of Husky tradition and I'm sad to see it go. It's a thing, a Vita bug from the 60s. They built this helmet around. What we do is we drive it every time we score a touchdown. Naturally, right after we score a touchdown, I'm a little bit more rushed and it looks a lot less graceful. I think my record is 17 cheerleaders on the front of this car. 
when they re finish remodeling the stadium, there's not going to be a track, which means there's really no place to drive the helmet. So this is actually going to be the helmet's last performance at a Husky football game. Well, we come to the games early on an evening game. We get here about 10:30, 11 o'clock. On a 12:30 game, we get here about seven. We get up, ice the boat down, get the boat ready. We have breakfast, coffee. First beer starts about nine o'clock for a 12:30, or cocktails, I should say, and they continue all the way through. That's how it's done. We're one of the few wood boats that are still that still come to the game, so we kind of like within the next hour. Um, We'll have, we'll have about, about 30 or 40 people on board and um, have a few cocktails, something to eat, and then head up to the game. We come down at halftime, too. That's part of the tradition, too. Come down, uh, have a little bite to eat, a little extra more cocktails to kind of keep things going, and then back up to the game to watch the rest of the game. And we've done it, and we, and we are diehards. We stay until the very last second. Every game. Never missed it. Even during the bad times, we stayed till the end. Yeah. There's no game like this. There's no tailgating. There's no stadium by the lake. I mean, this is amazing. We live in Boston. There's nothing. There's no. There's no nothing problem. like it. We got here yesterday, and we're leaving tomorrow morning. Well, you know, it's it's great when you think about it with the the, the boats, and it's an event. I, you know, I went to a I went to the University of Wisconsin, so it's a a similar atmosphere in some respects. But I love Husky Stadium. I love UW football. It's just a I love the view from the stadium. I love looking out at the boats and the water. And it's just a wonderful experience. You don't get anything better. I mean, you know, you you get to watch great football, see fun people, have fun with your friends. What more can you? Wave to the boats coming through. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is the Oregon game. It doesn't uh, kick off until 7:30 at night. We were here at 7:45 this morning to make sure we had our spot. I and mean, we got here at eight this morning. Track eight hours on. before kick today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So today we were a little bit late. There's no other place on Saturdays when you're talking college football that he or I would ever rather be than right here. We're always the first ones in line and have been for over 30 years. We're gonna miss this fine weather. It hasn't rained on us all year. And besides, it doesn't matter what the weather's like, man. It's just a great place. The first game of the year, you get here early and sort of stake out your uh, spot. Uh, the motorhomes are 76. 76. It's been to the 81, 82, 91, 92, 93, and 01. Wow. <laughs> Broken down every time. Uh, Marcus Tuyasasopo came down and painted the 01 on for me. There's Marcus painting the 01 on the back. This is the coaches of the University of Washington. You got DJ, Lambo, and Jim Owens up here. This is our opinion of the Cougars. And as you can tell, I'm a pretty good shot. A lot of memories in here. A lot of memories. You get around, don't you? Nineteen ninety season beating USC. It's a special memory for me because I believe that day we realized how good we could be and that we could end up in the Rose Bowl. And you come to the University of Washington to play in the Rose Bowl. That's why you go and play in the Pac-10. And that day in Husky Stadium, the fans were behind us. USC came in ranked sixth in the country. I think they were two-time Pac-10 champs. Over the middle, it is but we served notice to everybody in the Pac-10 right then and there with a huge victory that the Huskies weren't no joke. On the other side, it is Lewis takes the inside step. He's out of the 40, and he is going to go! And I think that took us to the next level. And everybody remembers that famous statement by the USC quarterback, Todd Marinovich, that day. All I saw was purple. Well, most of my memories are right out here. I don't usually make it inside. I listen to the game on the radio here at the cart. And uh, just kind of greet all the happy Husky faces. Yep, it's our last game here, 25 years here. Hey, this is our favorite crowd at all the places we work. Thank you. Yeah, we do the Mariners, the Seahawks, and the Huskies. We've done the Seahawks and Huskies since 87, the Mariners since 94. But this is our favorite crowd, all the alumni and same faces every week. I know about 200 faces and about 50 names, yep. Still working on getting some, learning some more names. Yeah. Get a few more each year. 
I see these two I guys right that way looking. You. I thought they were looking at me, but they were more looking at my cap. And they says, uh, excuse me, uh, but do you know anyone that plays for UW? I said, well, as a matter of fact, I do. My nephew's the quarterback. I'm a UW alumni. A beat cancer, go dog. Everyone at this table has flown in from Southern California. And I count about 20 people. Your jersey's all wrinkled. You're not doing a very good representation here. Everybody else is because I wear it every day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going five. I'm going six. You don't even know what they're talking about. <laughs> the thing is fun, man. We get serious at certain points, but 95% of the time, man, is fun, man. Fun and family, man. <laughs> We just got done grilling some duck and now we're on the chicken, so it's a poultry day here at Husky Stadium. You can get that grill going in front of a, about 10, 15,000 people over there, man. It's just a party. Hey. It's a party. Go dogs! Go dogs! Yeah, where's the duck and I'll shoot it at it. Ben, how are you? Oh, um, I've, I've been coming out since I was in fifth grade. I wasn't playing beer pong in fifth grade, but... Beer bomb. Oh! Right. Front kick. Coachment! Oh. Title this shot. Not even one. Not even one! Three, two, one. Oh. Oh. It's wow. the biggest game of the season. Uh, we haven't we haven't beaten anybody. We haven't beaten anybody of like of value. Of like, no, of no of stature. So far, until until tonight. 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 To play them, to play them for our last like Husky game in Airbnb. that stadium is going to be like we have to. Woo! We have to. Woo! Woo! Well, as, as as pledges, we have to save seats for the older brothers in the house. Because um, we got to get the best seats. seats. We got to get the best seats. So that we and can really cheer hard. Go crazy. They're competitive. They're really Rage. competitive in the. Ball you want to you want to be like front and center. And front, you want to you want to get front center. You want to get front on the 50 yard line. Be able to see the game. The older brothers really you know mandate that we do that. We've got an Eastern Eagle. We've got a, a cougar, we've got a duck, and then a lot of huskies. And a duck. Well, two ducks. A little duck clet here. He thinks he's a duck, but wait till the wait till the huskies start beating the ducks. A pup. My son is a duck. I failed. <laughs> well, I've been a husky for six or seven years, and game day is a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a tradition. I never had a. Uh, football growing up, college football growing up in my family, so uh, that's one of the reasons I came to UW. It's something to look forward to in the fall, and uh, it's really part of what makes going here so great. Basically, the uh, game, name of the game is getting as many cars onto the lawn as possible. Um, I think our record's around 36 or so, which is uh, a little unheard of. Usually we average around 28, um, and basically you just pack them in like sardines. We have uh, two or three uh, groups that uh, park in the back and uh, tailgate back there until the game starts. We have uh, a tailgate before and after every uh, game and uh, never missed one. We come to every game. Every game. Every game. It's, it's a, you know, college football is just a great experience. And if you got the opportunity to go, you better go. The people in the early 50s, in the mid 50s, would come, even in the 40s, would come in and tie their boats off to the trees and just push their boats into the mud and then go to the games. And it's, a, it's kind of a family tradition, but it's a, it's a group tradition. You know, I started coming in 1965. As a kid, we used to come to games in the 50s, but um, I marched for nine years and I've been directing since 1980. And Husky Stadium and Husky football is just fun and we're going to have a great game today. Go, dogs. <laughs> I didn't think I could get back into college football when, we, when this first started, when Keith first got recruited. Mm -hmm. And the first couple of games that we went to, our seats were right next to this band. <laughs> This is not going to work. <laughs> but I wouldn't have it any other way now. We sit next to that band, and those guys are so full of enthusiasm. They pump it up. They pump it up. I've been to a pro game 
and nothing was like a college game. I realized that college was a lot more exciting than the NFL. I just remember going to the game, it felt like something special. It wasn't like, uh, it was something different than the Mariners and the Seahawks going into the Dome Stadium, being outside in the, the elements, getting rained on, hanging out with my dad, barbecuing before the game out in the parking lot was something that I've never experienced before. and. It's uh, something that I've enjoyed doing my whole life, so now I get to be around it and get paid. The grocery store has been an essential part of the community here, not only on game days, but throughout the typical work week. It has, it has all the amenities here, so people flock here, obviously. We have tailgating out back. And it makes it fun to come to work. When we have hundreds of Husky fans tailgating coming in, it's just a... Everybody's shaking hands, high-fiving even before the game, you know, getting revved up, so. Getting well lubricated, as we call it. Who's house? Dog house! Who's house? Dog house! Who's house? Dog house! Who's house? Dog house! 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 Dog Great times, fun times. This is the only place to do it, the only way to do it. It, it just brings to mind why, why we live here, why we love it here, and uh, there is no better place for a stadium in this country. and I do for entertainment. Uh, we do football and basketball and uh, it's just it's our enjoyment, it's our entertainment. We bleed purple and gold in football for sure. Dogs that we die. And as a player, we, we got an opportunity that most people don't. When you come out that tunnel and you can see the lake there, it's just an awesome sight. Husky Stadium has been a good place for me. We pretty much anchor exactly right here every time. It's the signature shot at halftime where they zoom in on our boat and then they pan out and get the view of the whole stadium. And so we've been out here with the TV, working off the generator and the inverter or something, and see ourselves on TV and waving and screaming and, you know, but, you know, we're not out here to get on TV. We're out here to <laughs> beat the Oregon Ducks. <laughs> Fans up here. The rivalry is strong, right? Oh, who like, wants to be a duck? Like, who wants to be a duck? Quack, quack, nobody, quack, nobody, quack, nobody quack. likes, nobody so likes a duck besides so, Eugene. But it's so funny when you like, who wants to live Eugene? I have friends in Oregon the worst and they like, don't really care about the ducks. Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! You know, just to put it here, point blank, I hate the ducks. The only good duck is a dead duck. Cooked. Duck all around. Duck all around. Duck all around is wonderful. There's about to be some fights in the parking lot. Oh, there's there's, sure yeah. there's going to be fights. some fights out there. Dude. Go Oregon! Go Oregon! Go Oregon! Go Oregon! She was born, born that way, green and yellow. He's a problem child. He's lost. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm hated around here though because my second team is uh, Cougars. <laughs> For now, Oregon definitely is the hated team, absolutely. For good reason. It's unfortunately, some people make the wrong decisions, but you know what? It works out. <laughs> <laughs> David has always taken credit uh, single-handedly for the resurgence of Oregon football, Phil Knight notwithstanding, and, and we've tried to absolve him uh, over the years, make him not feel so bad. For the He'll give it to the fullback, Dwayne Jones, Dwayne Jones rumbling, Dwayne Jones to the goal line and scores!
Oh, we're sitting there, it's his 50th birthday. And I said, oh no, we scored too soon. And I said, they're gonna have time to score again, we're done. Heward took them all the way down the field. Here's the out pattern to Bjornsson, he's got it. First down, Huskies, 31 yard line. Lofted the one over into the corner. Backside pressure ball is intercepted! Kenny Wheaton! Touchdown if he doesn't trip! Wheaton picked it off and ran it back for a touchdown, and I said, oh shit, happy birthday, buddy. <laughs> we all have bad games, have mistakes. I guess at the end of the day for the Ducks, you know, it was a mid-season game against a conference opponent. You know, maybe play a highlight of a Rose Bowl victory, a national championship victory. It still stings, no doubt about it, but a uh, great rivalry, as Bob alluded to, nonetheless, uh, I guess it started. I want to go to Washington. I'm like, Washington? They ain't won no games, homie. How you want to go there? <laughs> he said, that's why I want to go there. I mean, you should see the games now. Once you're a Husky fan, you're always a Husky fan. Die hard Husky. Bulldogs! It's exciting, though. It's going to be a good day. You know, I'm a graduate from the University of Washington. I uh, graduated in 93, so while I was there, we went to three straight Rose Bowls and won a national championship. Bailey. Bam! <laughs> 91. 20 year reunion today. Yeah, they're all coming yeah, out. Yeah. Don, 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 Don James. Father, Don James. I'm coming so up with the coin. The 91 team was just so outstanding. To be in school and experience that, you were bulletproof at that point. It means everything. It's something that you will you wear that badge of honor for the rest of your life, especially uh, my team being though we won a national championship, so you wear that proud. But purple, whether we won a national championship or not, purple and gold, you'll bleed that for the rest of your life. You know, we're out here roughing it, but in my opinion, it's a million dollar view, it's a million dollar tailgate. I wouldn't miss it for the world, that's for sure. I started coming to Husky football games in 1959 when I enrolled at the University of Washington. In those days, it was just routine for us to go to the Rose Bowl. It was, the question was, are you going to the Rose Bowl this year? And the answer would be, no, I think I'll wait until next year. That was a time when, when we used to go into the stadium with uh, Irish coffee. This was the East End Tequila Club for many years. And back in the day when there was a little imbibing going on, there isn't any more, of course, but. <laughs> Back in the day, uh, we, we had some fun times up here, so I'll, I'll miss that. I would hope that after all the priority that I got, that I'd still have the same. You know, it, uh, you don't know what you're sitting there. <laughs> My family's had tickets for 65 years. Wow. Same yeah. seats? Or same same seats. I, I have shifted oh, maybe two rows. <laughs> Last year, I lost my privileges to E12. And so we are kind of uh, uh, here almost illegally because we, we packed our stuff all the way from a parking area across the bridge to come in here and spend our last day uh, before the stadium's torn down. We don't know what's going to happen in the new stadium yet, to be honest, with our tickets. It's a little unclear so far. Well, I hear the light rail is going to take people to the other side of the Mutt Lake Cut, so they'll have, a lot of our customers will have to backtrack to find us. But it's a faithful crowd, and I'm not worried. I think they will. Your seating is uh, antiquated and getting rid of the track will make a much better viewing for all involved, especially the price of the tickets. I mean, none of this and better. I know some of your tickets probably, what, 75 bucks, 80 bucks printed 80, on them? Right 80, 80 bucks, like I say. Today. For 80 bucks, it better be a good seat instead of a wooden <laughs> bench. <laughs> My fear is that it's going to turn into something that's not Husky football. It's gonna depend on what, what sort of experience we can expect here in E12. If we don't have it, it's not the same. You know, you get used to something and you, and you feel comfortable with it and you like it. And, you, and people hate change, and I'm, I'm one of those. 
Uh, it's it's kind of like life in itself. It's just, you know, change is constant. Uh, it, it waits for no one. I don't think there's any question. There's a, there's a reason that uh, the stadium is going to be different because it, it needs to be. Obviously, this place uh, needs a lot of work, in, and the stadium needs to be brought into a competitive basis with, uh, with other stadiums around the country. But uh, I do think that a little bit of all of us is, is going to go down when, when these walls come tumbling down as well. Uh, it truly is going to be the Husky Stadium we know and love with the jaws, just better, better sight lines um, and, and louder. The Seattle fans, Husky fans are crazy, and for them to be right up on the players is gonna be a good feeling. I sit right behind the visitor's bench and just heckle them all day long, and so if I can get even closer to the action for that, then well, that's a good thing, that's for sure. Okay, it, but it's also like we're on the 50 yard line now, and no matter how close we are, being in the end zone, it's, it's not the different. same, it's, it's not the same. Not the same. Well, I like the track, truthfully, so I'm kind of sad that the track's gonna be gone, because that's kind of like our turf but it will be cool to see the changes that Husky Stadium has to bring. It's, it's, it's always sad to see the, the change, but it's the, the stadium was ready for a, for a makeover. You know, in 87, when they rebuilt the other side, everybody was upset about that, but now that it's, it's there, people have come, become accustomed to it. With the new stadium, I think it's the same thing, and people have some trepidation about it, but they're gonna come to love it just like they love the stadium in the old. Everything's, everything has to change, and I think this is a change for the good. It's exciting. I think everyone's kind of a little bit nostalgic about seeing the old stadium go, but excited about what's to come. I mean, I've seen the renderings, and it looks great. It looks like it's going to be a fantastic place to see a football game. We already we actually put our deposit down for a patio suites uh, when the whole thing's said and done, so we're not going anywhere. <laughs> Well, we'll be down at Seahawks Stadium next year for sure, uh, but I've, we've been tailgating here for 20 years. A lot of good memories here, so we'll definitely be back. We've got an RV. We bought an old 1980 RV. We're going to continue tradition on land. We're going to have a land cruiser, and we're going to party up the same way we've done in the past. The RV does have a name. It's called Cousin Eddie. That's, it's been a lot of fun. It's been great. I've, I've enjoyed uh, the experience, and I look forward to continuing, and I hope in some fashion we'll still be able to do it. Who knows, I think it'll be something we'll have to all look at and figure out after it's built. $250 million later. This is actually my first visit to Husky Stadium. I've never been here before. And uh, my wife's made a few of the games, but uh, this is my first visit. So I haven't been actually been inside the stadium yet. Hey, let's crank it up. You're going to head this out of Washington. There it goes. It's a very loud, intimidating place. I gotta give it to them. Those fans are intense, they're very loud, and they know exactly why they come here. The noise. Not only can you hear it, but you can actually feel the noise. It's really loud here <laughs> during third downs. I think airplanes are 160, and we got to 133. Not bad. Just wait till the night when there's 70 plus thousand, and TV cameras at home are doing that. You'll know what it means. The siren sounds, the helmet running around the track, the spirals going up. It's just something about it. The capper's got to be the view. You know, those aspects make Husky Stadium what it is, that tunnel, the way the noise gets trapped in there, and just that scenery on the shores of Lake Washington. There's no place like it in college football. When he first came here on his recruiting visit, they brought him over to the stadium, and he was still indecisive about where he was going to go. And he says he walked through that tunnel, there's no, there's no tunnel like that in NFL or college. Our tunnel is legendary. We'd have other teams walking down that tunnel and be scared for the rest of the game just on walking while we were screaming that chant. The chant? Say, say who? Say who? Say who? Say dogs ain't bad, motherfucker. Say who? <laughs> Coach James didn't hear, but that was the best chant we had here at the University of Washington. There is a passion here that, boy, I tell you, uh, you try to convince yourself it's just a game, and you just can't do it. It just goes deeper, and it goes to a part of you that uh, I think if we could uh, tap into that would uh, solve a lot of issues. Uh, but uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. I love the games in September when it's 80 degrees and we're out here, but I also can remember some games where it's pouring rain and we're under the canvas, five people under the canvas in here. So we got this one ticket right here. This one ticket for eight people and they let you go in and out. So we're gonna go like one person in, go like check it out for a bit, and then the next person, and the next person. Have it like experience it, and tell your kids that uh, you're uh, able to get into this game. 
He is like the most energetic man. He has so much energy and the costumes he comes up with, I think, you know, like the thought he puts into all those props and having something new to rip up and tear up and throw into the stands every week is amazing. We do Science Friday night. I go to the Value Village and get the opposing team's mascot and a stuffed animal. He's, he is the UW. He, you know, and he's the UW for all the people that went to school here in the 80s and the 90s. <laughs> I usually have a couple of, a couple of pregame appearances for uh, uh, some fans, if you will. This is last game. He's yeah. been doing it for 20 years, and he's coming here. Yeah, it's 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 either taking a cab from Husky Stadium to this game after the spell out, or at you know, right when halftime starts, jump in a cab and get on down there. Do you know Captain Husky? You know, the most frequent memory is for him when he dives and he falls. He's always fall. He dives and he falls and half the time someone catches him and half the time he falls into the crowd. I don't know. <laughs> That's part of the reason uh, it's time to retire, I think. Ooh! Nice hit! Leo! There we go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Walk through the tailgates. Uh, some of the alumni and whatever will throw us food. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll be able to get some today. It's always, it's always a possibility. Hey, I'd love to have some duck. <laughs> yeah. Only way duck is good. Cook. The only way is good. And husky steak. We go. Mmm. That's great. That's the best duck I've had all week. Notice what kind of glass he's drinking yes. out of here. I'm an equal opportunity. I'm not I'm a smart duck. I'll drink the husky beer. <laughs> situation. I mean, this has got to be exciting for the fans and, and the players as well and the coaches. So I think everybody who's in the Husky family should have a great time tonight. Let's go! I hate Oregon, so I had to get a dead duck. No, stop, stop on it! Stop on it! Stop on it! There you go! Hey, stop on it! Ah, oh, there you go! Go like this! There you go! Hey, this 
who run the show. This who run the show over here. Hey, hey. We got the folks in the house. The camera time. The folks in the house. Do it. We got, we got Miss Polk right here. We got Big Brother in the back. Me and Tom. We on over here. Hey, it's going down. We're going to bust it wide open. Wide open. That's what's up. Washington, okay? This is where it's at. College football means to me that about 10 or 12 times every fall and winter, I get to get together with friends and people that I only see once a year. And it's less about the game and more about this. Yeah. 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 Who else? Who else? Hold on, I ain't getting to see who else is here. The dog house. <laughs> Even if we're underdogs, we're tied right now, and that's all people are looking for. It's the what if scenario. Everybody here is talking about what if we this and what if we that. nearly a century to 1920 and a then brand new Husky Stadium. Several renovations and 91 years later, the 547th Washington game in this stadium will be the last for 18 months and about $250 million. Television when I knew I was gonna come to school here. The aerial view, 
on the lake, the boats in the water. around you right now. This is what it's all about. Like, coming out when the, when the horn blows, you know we're going for war. with a right to left run up sends a big boot on the way this chases Smith to the goal line far side on the left coming back into the middle of the field at the 15 at the 20 and about to the 21 yard line and that is it this Oregon football team runs to the ball as well as any team in America five-step drop thrown to the near side and overthrow the ball is intercepted Oregon coming down the near sideline on the run back Eddie Pleasant the safety with a pick and run out of bounds in Husky territory another handoff James turns the left corner in space to the 10 to the 5 Oregon in the end zone just like that touchdown La Michael James from 18 yards out nice dropping to pass comes near side right ball in the air coming back and this ball is caught by Curse near the 20 yard line Washington with a great big break now and a first and 10 at the Oregon 32 yard line let's see what they do with it being a Husky is everything to me like I am a, I'm a Husky always Husky is where I learned to be a man I learned how to play football and just do your job not worry about the things around you and just go hard and I really took that into a 15-year career in the NFL. 41-yard, maybe 42 attempt angle right to get on the board. Here's his kick away. Looks good. And it is. Washington puts three on the board following the Oregon turnover. There is a massive Husky humanity huddling and bouncing up and down just outside the end zone to the west. And those are the guys, the 1991 Washington Huskies who 20 years ago absolutely thrilled this part of the world with a national championship, 12-0, a perfect 6-0 at home. They blew everybody out. In fact, Oregon was the closest game at home that year, 29-7 at the 10-yard line near side left. Outside the numbers comes up, broke a tackle, 25 at the 30, cutback move, 40 foot race now down the near sideline 30 a diving save of a tackle all right well we're going to do it this time from 45 yards out Maldonado looking for the longest field goal of his Oregon career ball is down kick is away and it is well short and no good and so at halftime Oregon leading 17 to 10 the Huskies will try to do something in the second half don't turn the ball over here in the second half. Huskies keep doing what they're doing. They're right in this football game. They're going to have a chance. This drill has been around. This thing has landed on 520 before, and we went back and picked it up. Set to start period number three with the Huskies trailing the Ducks 17 to 10. Making sure everybody's on the same page. With four on the plate clock, takes the snap, drops the pass, looks left, fires to the boundary. This ball is caught for a first down. Wants to throw it, steps up into the pocket and steps into three white-shirted Duck defenders. Down he goes again. This time back at the 26-yard line, loss of seven. Here's the quarterback, Thomas, rolling right, looking for the end zone. Throws, ball caught, touchdown. David Paulson, the tight end for the Oregon Ducks. Second score of the night. Nice puts the ball to the deck. Maldonado's kick is up, and it is good.
you got the best fans in all the land, like period. Like these guys, win, lose, or draw, they're, they're, they're standing up the whole time. It takes a real man to wear purple. You know what I mean? Motion out of the formation from Callier. Takes his time, fakes the handoff to Price, throws for the end zone, touchdown! Hartvigson, no doubt about this one. Touchdown, Washington, to tight end Michael Hartvigson off a nifty play fake to tight end, wide open at the back of the end zone. The Huskies are within seven with their first touchdown of the ball game. A 49-yard drive for the score. The one-yard line, inside handoff, Barner again, following a nice block in front, into the end zone, touchdown, Ducks. And again, that really silences the house here in this big crowd at Husky Stadium. They fake the handoff to Polk, throw over the middle, this ball is caught, Angular inside the 15, and down at the Oregon 10-yard line. First and goal at the 10. Empty backfield here, Price in the shotgun, Farhash on the left at the 10-yard line, going left to right. Five wide receivers in the set, keep the throw, looks for the left corner ball in the air, taken down, touchdown Washington, Jason Williams held on! We want to try it once? Yeah. All right. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shake the move, baby. I'd ever get flowers. Comedy's not pretty, but they're trying to pretty me up, I guess. But yeah, very cool. Very nice. Very nice gesture. Wouldn't have expected it. I'm not the Brett Favre of superheroes. I am done. I'm done. He stays in there and is joined in the backfield by the Anthony Thomas on second down play fake option to the near side left pitch back Thomas turns the corner at the five he's into the end zone Ooh, that was easy touchdown Oregon the Anthony Thomas the freshman skirting the left side on the option pitch no problem at all for this Oregon offense price under center straight drop little pump coming to the near side left puts this ball up for grabs in the end zone it is dropped so instead of a touchdown it is a fourth down I think Chip Kelly's going to leave his offense on the field, leading 34 to 17, and time grows short. 126 remaining. And time grows short on this night, on this game, on this stadium. Do another running play out to the five yard line, and that should be the final play of this game, and it's going to be the final play of this stadium as we know it. Nearly a century's worth of Husky football history comes to a close in Seattle on a cool night in November. The final game at Husky Stadium, much as the first game at Husky Stadium back in 1920, resulting in a Washington loss. This time, the Oregon Ducks make it eight straight over Washington, knocking off the Dogs 34-17 to as Husky Stadium goes rather quietly into the night.
We're a young team. We're going to be all right. Husky Stadium's about to get towed down, but they're going to build it back up and we're going to keep it moving. That's how it goes. Go dogs. Go dogs! Go dogs! Go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs.